Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. As South Africans start to feel winter's grip, Terence Creamer joins me to discuss whether ESCOM has what it takes to keep the lights on over the peak periods. Hi Terence. Hi. South Africa relapsed into load shedding during March and then again this week. Does ESCOM have what it takes to get us through this winter? Well, that's the big question, and it's been the question since 2008 and every, every time winter comes, because winter is when we enter these high demand periods, especially, as you say, over the peak. Summer traditionally is when we've had our load shedding episodes, though. If you think back, it's usually during the rainy period and we hear things like wet coal. And uh, the reason is, is it's the profile of demand during the summer period. It's much flatter. They call it like a table mountain type profile so that there's not a lot of spinning capacity in, in the system um, to manage if a, if a unit goes out. So that's why traditionally summer is the period where we have our, our load shedding. It's also the, the high maintenance period. So Eskom takes out a lot of its plant uh, during, during summer uh, because it's not having to spin at say 36,000 megawatts, which is expected, that's the expected peak for July this year, which, um, which is also well below our, our old peaks. We used to hit over 37,000 megawatts at times in winters past. So it doesn't have those units spinning during summer to get through if, if a big unit, say a Kuburg or one of the big uh, coal-fired power station units. So when uh, March 6th happened, we had a number of units trip at the Duva power station. There was, there was wet coal issues. There was coal delivery system problems and a breakdown. And that's why we, we re relapsed into load shedding for 14 hours or so during that day. The two hours of load shedding this week, I think, came as more of a surprise to Eskom because I think they're coming out now of a ta into a tapering period in terms of maintenance. So what what is you know they've had many thousands of units out for maintenance. We're now really bringing that right back for winter, so that there's very little of the units out for maintenance, and therefore the tripping of the Duva and Kendall units, uh, the two generators yesterday or this week um, uh, in Mpumalanga. I think uh, is a bit of a worrying sign. So whether Eskom can get us through uh, this winter, theoretically they should because the maintenance tapering demand is not as high as it used to be. We've had a mild winter last year. There's an expectation, although it doesn't feel like it this week, but there's an expectation of a fairly mild winter again. So th we sh they should theoretically get us through this winter. But the, the, the I think the problem is that there's these um, unforeseen events and because the system is running so tight with very little reserve margin you know, if a unit or two units goes down as it did uh, this week and then we don't get the capacity that we're importing from Kohora Basa. Uh, last winter there was a problem around Kohora Basa. We imported around 1,300 megawatts a day from Kohora Basa. They're thinking that should be at 1,500 maximum this uh, this year but again yesterday or this week again we saw that um, it didn't meet that sort of uh, uh, supply side expectation. So we tight and any big event, uh, two units tripping or Kohura Basa going down is going to lead us back into a difficult period and we could have periods of load shedding this winter. What help will the private suppliers, both renewables and conventional, provide in getting us through these peak periods? Well, the renewables program has been a success in terms of getting South Africa's renewable, uh, getting ch diversifying South Africa's energy mix, getting foreign direct investment into South Africa's electricity economy. It's really been dominated by one a monopoly in the form of Eskom. And it's, uh, it's been an exciting time to see that sort of 150 billion rands worth of investment from foreigners and domestic uh, sources has come in, private money, into the electricity uh, supply industry over the last couple of years. The problem with uh, uh, renewable energy is that it doesn't really provide the capacity necessarily when Eskom needs it. And Eskom really needs it between that peak period of five and nine. And, uh, you know, th by that stage, you know, the sun is down. So the, the solar plants, unless they have, um, they've got some storage capability, which none of those are really operating yet. So the photovoltaic plants that operate at the moment they can only operate when the sun is, is set up in the sky, and that's not during the peak period. The wind is variable and intermittent, and you know you can't rely on that as a base load source. So uh, Eskom's been quite clear that the, the renewables aren't going to play a major role in getting us through 
this winter, the, especially the winter peaks. Uh, they, they can help during the day and they, they, they are buying all that capacity that they can to help stabilize the system. Um, then there's the private, municipal, uh, private and municipal um, co-generators or generators that Eskom, every little bit of short-term um, independent power producer capacity that is available, I think Eskom is trying to mop up. I think they've got something around the sort of 400 megawatts that they are buying in already. And they've pointed out that they would like to, over the next year or so, procure another 500 megawatts from the private sector. So they're going out on inquiry and they're going to look at, see how can they get more of that cogeneration capacity that might be available, but they, you know, it wasn't really palatable for someone to sell it to Eskom at the prices being offered and looking at a different pricing arrangement. And even, I think, looking creatively, you know, a lot of shopping centers and businesses and uh, you know, indu industries have, uh, have put in standby stand generator capacity, whether there's a possibility of tapping into that standby generator capacity at times when things are already quite uh, constrained. And uh, that would have possibly maybe been even enough to get us through uh, this week's incident, but because that only lasted for a couple of hours. But, you know, um, you know, until the big power stations are on, I think it's going to be quite difficult uh, for Eskom to add the sort of capacity on the supply side that it needs. And it is looking for supply side opportunities, but really most of the levers are on the demand side, management side, and, and there we've seen with the uh, tariff determinations that's been cut right back because now Eskom doesn't have um, the money available through the tariff. Uh, to, to continue with a lot of those programs. That is being reviewed because, you know, if you compare the cost of deploying a lot of the demand side management schemes versus the cost of running the, the diesel fuel open cycle gas turbines, it's, you know, it makes sense that, uh, you know, you, can go, you should rather go ahead with the demand side programs as well as those purchases from any supply side sources. So I think Eskom, even though they don't have the money in the budget from NERSA um, and it's not in the tariff, I think we'll be looking to try and um, you know, mitigate the, or eliminate as much as possible the use of those open cycle gas turbines, which are horrifically expensive. I think they're spending about a billion rand a month on diesel fuel, you know, to try and uh, try and find a way of rather spending it on other supply side solutions that are cheaper from industry, private businesses and municipalities, and then the demand side levers that are, you know, tricky, but uh, they are the obvious ones to start really pulling. ESCOM has also given an update on the Madupi and Kusile projects. Yes, as I said, you know, until those big units come in from the Madupi and the Kusile power stations, we are going to be in this constrained environment. So we've got those two mega projects underway. The one is up in Limpopo province. That's the Madupi. It's the most well known. It's the most troubled. It's been the most strike afflicted. And then you've got the Kusile power station that sort of flo floated somewhat under the lo radar relative to the Madupi, but there have also been a lot of uh, some issues on that site. And there have been delays on both projects. And, you know, we, uh, you know, if all had gone well, we should have already had a couple of units of Madupi uh, spinning and into the grid. But th things have not gone well in those projects, and Madupi is, w is well behind schedule. The latest we have is that it will be synchronized to the grid by December this year. You know, the initial indications when we were told last year that it was going to be delayed again, we sort of that the second half of uh, 2014 would be when Madupi's first unit would be synchronized. We're now being told it's right at the end of the year, December, and that there will then be a, a synchronization period, then there'll be a ramp up uh, to full capacity of that first unit um, during the, the first quarter of 2015. So really only towards the end of the first quarter of 2015 will we have that first unit in the system. And then it will be followed, I think, by, so that's Madupi unit six, and then we'll probably be followed by um, uh, Kusila Unit 1 uh, at some point during the first half, hopefully, but maybe into the second half of, of 2015. And then a steady you know, introduction of the other five units, respectively, at those plants. But it's been a troubled uh, build program. A lot of lessons have learned, been learned, hopefully. Um, and it, uh, you know, I think it's also uh, in the context of looking forward uh, into what the supply side options are. I think I probably is, should inform the way the Department of Energy, who has, you know, is custodian of the generation plan, which is in the process of being updated. That's the integrated resource plan. 
we'll have to think about do we go with such you know these mega high risk type projects do we go more incrementally what does that mean for another coal fired power station of the size of a Madupi and Kusile and dubbed coal three what does it mean for the big nuclear build because those are big uh, mega projects or is it uh, you know, is it advisable in the context of, um, you know, s demand side that has been quite uh, un uncertain. We've had a slowdown in demand. So we're going to uh, have to look at that when we revise the energy plan um, coming up in the next couple of months and how we go about doing this in possibly the lowest risk way to the economy. Thank you. That's the Second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.